Hello folks and welcome back to the shed. This is a build video for my uh, new plane which is a three channel trainer. Uh, I'm building it for a friend who wants to learn how to fly RC, he's never flown before. Um, so I want to make it as tough as possible but as easy to fly as possible. Uh, as we all know the, you crash a lot when you're learning and you're likely to destroy your first plane before you even start to fly it. So, what's unique about this one? It's a single boom pusher uh, and the fuselage is made from solid XPS foam which makes it very very tough and it's still very light. It has a big long energy absorbing nose uh, which houses the battery. Um, all the electronics are external like the ESC just runs around the outside here. Uh, receiver in a little recess there, servos on the tail, all exposed here, so all the wires and everything are easy to access and easy to understand how it all works. Uh, the rudder and elevator are separate, um, just to make it easy to build, easy to repair and easy to understand what their function is. I prefer to put the servos down on the tail like this because I can have short push rods, I don't have to run push rods and casing all the way up to the uh, fuselage. It may add a little bit of weight to the tail, but not a lot, I don't think. And to compensate for that, all I have to do is make the nose a little bit longer. Uh, because it's a three-channel, it needs dihedral or polyhedral in the wing. Um, and you can use any sort of wing, really. It's quite simple. This one is a one-metre wingspan from tip to tip, made up of three 36 centimetre sections. These were actually resurrected from my Fokker that went for a swim and all the wings were broken so these were the sections that I could uh, cut out from the broken wings. Um, in this particular one the wing tips are uh, glued in place with the tips up at uh, 120 millimetres and that gives a nice amount of uh, polyhedral. Um, I could use a, a normal arm and wing like this one which I'll try that as well uh, or you could even use a KFM style uh, flat wing as long as you have the dihedral. Alright, so let's go and see how it's built. The fuselage is made from a solid block of 50mm thick by 100mm high XPS foam. And the tail boom is just a narrow shaft which uh, is glued into a channel cut in the bottom of the fuselage. It's really easy to cut this stuff as long as you've got a sharp knife. The block of foam I cut for the fuselage is 40 centimetres long, but it actually gets cut down to about 36 for the final uh, fuselage. The arrow shaft needs to be cut down to 66 centimetres, and it is carbon fibre, so it's a good idea to wear uh, breathing protection to avoid the carbon dust. I'm using Gorilla Glue because that's nice and light and it fills the gap very easily and it needs a little bit of moisture to get it working properly. So a little bit of spray of water, squirt in some uh, Gorilla Glue and I'm just spreading it around with the arrow shaft. I've supported the outer end uh, at the right height to make sure it glues in the right spot. You can see how the Gorilla Glue foams up and fills in the gaps and makes a really nice strong bond. Now I'm working on the fuselage a bit more, cutting it down to 36 mil, uh, centimetres long, shaping down the nose area. And I could use the hot wire cutter really well for this job, but uh, I'm just using a knife and a hacksaw um, for those who don't have hot wire cutters. I'm narrowing down the rear section of the fuselage here so that the prop gets a cleaner feed of air. Um, and I think a hot wire cutter would do this a lot better, but uh, you can use a knife and a saw just to roughly cut out the shape and then sand it down to what you want. Very easy to sand this foam, but a uh, good idea to wear a mask. Very, very dusty. Now I'm placing the tie down bars. And you can see I've left the top part of the fuselage full width so that the wing has something to sit flat on. Reinforcing cards for the tie down bars and they just get uh, hot glued into place and drilled out so that the bars will pass all the way through.
and I cover the whole fuselage with coloured packing tape as usual which adds a lot of strength and this is the uh, reinforcing patch for the motor mount finishing up the tape covering for the fuselage Now for the elevator and rudder. I could use foam board like Depron or a normal paper covered foam board but I thought I'd cut some uh, flat sheets from the leftover wing beds from the XPS foam. And I need to make this a little bit thicker than foam board because it's a, it's a little bit weaker and a little bit more brittle. But it gives me a chance to shape down and have a nice airfoil shaped uh, rudder. Now to cut the rudder hinge and I just cut halfway through, place some Blenderm tape on one side, cut out a V on the other side and then uh, more tape to finish it off. And it's the same procedure for the elevator, just cut out the shape which is just going to be a simple rectangle. Uh, thin down the trailing edge and round off the leading edge, round off the edges. It's looking nice. And for the, for the elevator I'm going to insert a little spar for a little bit of extra strength. So I just cut a shallow slot, widen it out with a, a piece of wire and then pop the little uh, 0.5 by 3 mil carbon fibre strip. These are ridiculously cheap from Hobby King. About 50 cents for a 750mm length, I think. And that's just super glued into place. Covered with tape. And now I'm going to glue them onto the tail boom. So more Gorilla Glue for the rudder to glue it onto the tail boom. Just uh, bracing it so that it sets vertically. Now this is the little pedestal for the elevator. I'm keeping the rudder and elevator separate just to keep it very simple. Um, makes it easy to replace either one of them if I have to. And again, propping it in place and making sure it's perfectly horizontal. And the elevator servo and rudder servos are just going to be glued into position in front of each of them. I prefer having the uh, servos down on the tail and, and short push rods rather than having to run a, a long push rod all the way down the tail boom. It's just a lot easier and to balance the weight all I have to do is make the nose a little bit longer. Now for the control horns, you've seen me do this in other videos, so I won't go into this in too great a detail. Just gets hot glued into place. So the push rod's connected up, just uh, checking it with the servo checker. Uh, and the same with the rudder, just uh, setting the correct length for the rudder. And there we have the basic fuselage finished. I really want this model to be as light but crash proof as possible so I'm going to have a big soft foam nose uh, that supports the battery. So this is some uh, packing that came with uh, a computer I think and knocked it off from work. Just um, shaving it down to shape making sure the battery is going to fit in. I'm just using a 1300 milliamp hour battery right up in the nose as far as I can get it. more aerodynamic shaping and then I just cover it with uh, cloth tape to hold it together and give it a bit of strength and uh, make it all 
nice and tough. I need a little space cut out of the front of the fuselage as well for the um, connections to fit into. The battery connections can sort of get stuffed back in there once the battery's in the nose and the nose is closed. Now I'm making a bottom hinge for the hose just out of some uh, strong fibre tape. Another piece of tough tape over the top of that. And that just shows how the connections and wires fit back into the fuselage. Now time for the motor. The motor mount is just a 20mm uh, by 1.5mm aluminium just bent up into an L shape uh, and the motor bolted on. The ESC, I'm just cutting a little recess in the solid foam so that the ESC can just fit uh, in the side there, just taped into position. Also cutting a little hole for the uh, battery connection wire to pass through into that little um, space in the front. And I'm also cutting out a little recess for the um, receiver to fit into. The ESC signal wire passes uh, straight through to the other side so that it can plug into the receiver. And all of that just gets taped down. Now I'm adding a little bit of Loctite to the motor mounts just to make sure they don't come undone. And checking the programming on my Tyrannus. Giving the motor a run up, make sure it's all turning the right way. And now I'm doing a, a power test to see how much current it's going to drain at uh, full power. And turns out it's only draining 11 amps, so my 25 amp ESC is going to do it easily. Now a bit of Velcro to hold the nose up. And my final little addition is a low voltage alarm and battery checker which I'll mount permanently in that foam nose cone so that I'll always know what the battery level is and if I forget to check it's going to give me an alarm to uh, wake me up. These little low voltage alarms are only a couple of dollars on eBay so it's a good idea to buy a stack of them and just have them always handy. Here we go, we've got a full battery and we're ready to rumble.